passed away. We wanted men. Chelsea, whenever we get a new house, just an outside covered deck and some kind of basement area <laughs> will, be, was, will be great. Yeah, we, uh, when was it? With property value increasing? Mm -hmm. we, we took full advantage of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. I don't know if you want to get yours, but it's a little different than mine. Right. Which which one? It's the straight. Oh. Oh no no no. I guess we can start. So anyway, fuck, I hate starting. I just <laughs> never know how to start. <laughs> You've been hanging out for like what forty five minutes? Going yeah, through the yeah, collection yeah. Tour? You go from natural Is to it? unnatural. We just start. You go from natural unnatural to like formatted. Fakey like podcast. Hey, welcome to the show. We've is been it, talking. Is it already re recording? Yeah. Yes. So we could we could we could pull that move that every podcast with. Oh, we're recording. Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, oh, how hey, you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to figure this crap out. This is our 50th episode, by the way. So. Oh, yes. Hey, hey, hey raise a glass. Cheers. 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 Boom, boom, boom. So that's pretty. That's uh, pretty exciting. We've got uh, Jordan Gasly sitting in with us today. Hi. Hi. I don't know why my voice went really high pitch on that. And I How's it going, guys? Hey, guys! <laughs> so excited to be here. <laughs> this is my first podcast. And we have Jordan here today because he's a modern collector, not just Star Wars, but more in depth with the Casper, with the Transformers and Marvel Legends. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to all that stuff. But I'm kind of curious. Both of you. Yes. Lived, lived in Louisiana on the bayou. Right. Yeah. What is that like? It's, <laughs> it's freaking backwoods. It's yeah. <laughs> it's horrible. Like, what What is the environment like? Because I just imagine swampy, but I don't think that's accurate. No, that that, that is accurate. Is it? <laughs> that is. <laughs> we, we actually grew up like forty five minutes apart. Right. Which yeah. is crazy. It's nuts. It, it's funny too because whenever I moved up here, uh, in, so my my hometown is Homa, Louisiana. Glenn, I know that you know what home, where Homa is. Jason, probably not. No. But so, like, it's easier to just say New Orleans, mm -hmm. right? And then, I, then I would be like, actually, I'm from south of New Orleans. And then people would be like, "There's something south of New You're Orleans." Serious. I was, at, oh I God. said that to Glenn. I'm like, wait, <laughs> <laughs> something more south than that? Yeah. So I'm, I'm convinced, and then Glenn, you can probably back me up on this. That Homa, Louisiana, is your last stop before you technically get like down the bayou. <laughs> yes, it, <laughs> like, is. it is. It is. That's the stop before the the primary mode of transportation goes from uh, automobiles to P-Rogs. So. Well, you have to explain what a P-Rog is, because people probably don't know what it is. It's, it's, it is. it's a canoe-ish. Like, right. It's, yeah. It's it's just like a, a very specific type of boat that maneuvers around the, the bayous and small I really hope there. somebody's not cutting their grass right now. Something over there. Oh, it's my freaking neighbor. He's cutting <laughs> something. Josh, how long are you going to be? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that makes the podcast good. <laughs> yeah, we leave all that stuff in. We leave in. all the stuff in. Leave that in. I really think people enjoy the, the, the naturalness of the podcast. Yeah, I, hope we I love that. It. <laughs> so, but yeah, like, and what was so? I I had met uh, obviously met both of you guys through the the Facebook page, the Star Wars, Star Wars Collectors uh, Facebook page for Georgia, and. There was something I had posted, or I reacted to something, and then Glenn was the first person to comment. I'm like, "Who's this Glenn guy?" And I click on his profile, and I see that he's from, like, m like two towns over from me. I'm like, "Wait a minute, this is from Louisiana too." And then uh, six months later, he brought home a king cake for me. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Homa was the town where we went to for part not parties, but it, we wanted to go to the mall. Mm-hmm. We wanted to go to watch a movie. It's not like it is up here where you're like, let me pick up my phone and figure out where I want to go. What time? Well, first, let me figure out what time I want to go. Then I can pick where I want right. to go. It's it's a day yeah. to go to the mall or to go to the movies or. You know, it's not an easy task. Which, or, which in Homa, that was a one-stop shop because the movie theater was in Southland Mall. Oh, Southland whenever, Mall. Whenever I say Southland Mall, or whenever I say a mall, it is nothing like the malls up here. Like, all the malls up here are large, two-story. Like, this was a very, like, small, one-level mall, no food court, and it was in the shape of an L. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. it, it was. It's still there, right. and it's still open, and I'm fairly certain... That the corn dog seven that is in that mall is the last corn dog seven in existence. That was the food court. Was the corn dog seven yeah. and the uh, uh, popcorn stand? Yep, that's what you yep. had. So is it like really out in the middle of nowhere, out in the middle of a swamp? You, I mean, there's it's surrounded by swamp, uh, swamp land, and I mean, there's a major bayou that runs like right down the middle of, of Homa. It's also, uh, it's, it's an interstate and then two state highways. Mm-hmm. To get, to get okay. from from I ten, yeah. So it's it's probably a good hour from New Orleans proper. Yeah. Well, what's it like to collect um, in a small I town? Didn't collect did. in a small town. I remember. I remember buying a lot of stuff in the nineties. Like I was really big into like the nineties X Men stuff, and the the one toy store which was the KB Toys that mm-hmm. was in the town or not town center but um, South and Mall would get a large portion of stuff and things were pretty plentiful but also the state of collecting was something that was so so different in 94 and 95 than it is right. today so uh, I mean I, I w- would say it's easy but they were just mass producing those things it seems right well I also remember the first time I walked into the Toys R Us you you know at 10 years old you walk in and you're just like oh crap was it the one in Metairie I don't remember. Okay, because that was the first one I went to. <laughs> but I was old enough to remember it, so I was pretty old mm-hmm. the first time. But, you know, you uh, first time I've been in one. But, you know, you, it's, it's the Walmarts, and it's the KB Toys, and, okay. uh, you know, the little bit. I remember, uh, you know, always having Star Wars, and, you know, when He-Man came out, I was like, I want that. And yeah. Santa Claus brought me He-Man. But So I, I will say this, to, to kind of answer the question was uh, I actually had to make an emergency trip down to Louisiana in September and when I was there I was like well now that um, the fires are put out I'm going to go and uh, check out this Walmart and this was around the t- this was the middle of September of last year and all the Masters of the Universe origin figures had just come out and they weren't up here I couldn't find any of them I walked into the Walmart there and they had four pegs full and I just and I couldn't wrap my head around it because I thought oh maybe they just got their shipment and then I came back up here and then still nothing but I grabbed them when I saw them so because I'm like I'm, I, I know what the state of body yeah. collecting <laughs> is right yeah. so yeah. I, yeah. I don't know maybe maybe there just aren't collectors down there or what I don't know right to, to echo what you're saying I as a grown up going back I'd always check the stores because yeah like, people down there just don't collect Mm. So you could find stuff, still find stuff at Walmart. Wow. It's the promised land. Yeah. Home of Louisiana. Yeah, home of Louisiana. <laughs> no, I don't think but, anyone's ever called it the promised land. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're collecting. But, but, I That's mean, where you so, got to go. You're right, but but as far as, like, the... You had your you had two lanes. You had a two-lane road here, a two-lane road here, and then you had a major bayou that mm-hmm. ran in between them. And then everything goes off those two That roads. would be uh, East Main Street and West Park. You're right. <laughs> Same thing. Well, home it wasn't... It wasn't really a bayou in Homa, or was it? I don't. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's it's got. There's there's a handful of bayous down there. Like mm-hmm. there's none of the the popular ones like New like Bayou Saint John in New Orleans. Like none of those like on that caliber. Mm-hmm. At least I I'm not remembering, or I'm not specifically remembering any of that caliber. Uh, the Big Waterway, which was the claim to our fame, because this is what you tune into a toy podcast is for South Louisiana <laughs> waterways. I'm asking. Is a, is a, the Intercoastal Canal, which mm-hmm. was the the big the big man made canal that connected the Mississippi to the rest of South Louisiana. Yeah. So. Very interesting. Yeah. For someone who doesn't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's worth going down there one time. Just to see Just it. Just to see it. 
and, and um, turn around and go out. Right. I mean, it's over. yeah, it's so bad down there that I was sending pictures to my grandmother one time, and my ex-wife was like, "How do we? How do we know what Walmart to send it to?" And I'm like, "There's one Walmart. Yeah, it's a D Walmart. <laughs> it's the Walmart." <laughs> and I remember when. I remember when, because it was an old school Walmart and then opened the Superstore, and I mm. remember when both of them opened and it being a big deal. Yep. I remember when the McDonald's opened. Yep. It was a big deal to get a McDonald's. Whenever whenever the Super Walmart in Homa had first opened, that was also whenever McDonald's was starting to put stores or restaurants in Walmarts, and that blew my mind. Yes. Like, and... and, and Small town, Homa, Louisiana. I was like, "There's a McDonald's inside the wall." Like, I just, just I couldn't fathom it. And I remember talking to my uncle about the Super Walmart, and he was just like, "Man, it's crazy. I can go, I'll get clothes, I'll go get meat, and then I got some underwear, and then I got some cereal, <laughs> and then I got some meat, and right. some socks." I had to go back and get more meat. Right. Living that Cajun lifestyle, man. Just. <laughs> I will say, I, I sometimes I do get homesick for South mm-hmm. Louisiana, uh, especially when it comes to the food. Right. So, like, I, you know, I, you can't get, you can get okay seafood up here. It's expensive because it gets shipped pretty much overnight from Louisiana. And there's one or two places that do it right. But when you go down there, like, I had to explain to a friend from Arkansas that buying shrimp from a dude in a gas station parking lot out of the you know the bed of his truck is the best way to get seafood he's mm-hmm. like that sounds disgusting i'm like buddy that's where the, it's fresh like that's where they get it from right. that's the place to go the ocean's right. 10 feet from the truck exactly right. <laughs> and, and it, it blew his mind he's like i don't understand this yeah it doesn't sound right right somebody no. who's never no, experienced I, it it's like oh. i I've, i can back him up because i mm-hmm. was down there one time with with one of my exes and we drove by a dude on the side of the road selling shrimp and i get to my grandma's house and i'm like well ma some dude selling shrimp out of the back of his truck, and she's like, "Oh, that's Leroy. He just got back from <laughs> Port Saint, you know, uh, oh, shit. He just got for back like from Pontchartrain from, train from and, Cocodry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best shrimp." And, and then we go to buy it, and he's like, "You got a, you got a uh, cooler?" And we're like, "No. Hold on, I got Walmart bags. I'll put it in yep. for you." And he puts it in a Walmart bag, puts fresh shrimp in a Walmart bag, and we take it to my grandma's house, and she makes it. And it wow. Yeah, mm-hmm. like two bucks a pound. Mm-hmm. And big shrimp. Mm-hmm. You got to hit it on crawfish season two, man. Mm-hmm. So, which just ended, like about a month or so ago, yeah. I think. So, but uh, oh. yeah. So it sounds like we're we're gonna take Jason to South Louisiana. Yeah, we need to. Seems like that's gonna be an experience. <laughs> it is something I'll never forget. <laughs> no, you won't. We'll go to New Orleans. And Have you been to the Everglades? I'm just curious because I've been to the Everglades, so I was just gonna try to compare a bayou to the Everglades. I mean, I feel like you're not too far off. Like you're you're still you know probably below sea level on that at that point. Yeah. You're still kind of swampy, marshy right. type water. I mean, you get around on because they have those airboats down there too. Yep. So yeah, and it's not like what you're thinking. You don't walk out of your house and there's a swamp. It's not that bad. Yeah, depending on the time of year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hurricane yeah. season, probably a swamp in yeah. your backyard. You, you might see an alligator in your backyard, but don't count on it. You know, it's not that bad. But uh, South Florida does remind me a lot of South Louisiana. Mm, okay. It, you awesome. know, it, it's flat and humid and trees and water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what else, uh, what city reminds me a lot of New Orleans? Have you guys ever been to Savannah? Yes. No, not yet. Oh, man, Savannah's great if you get a chance. It's like, it's right there. It's right off the Savannah River. It's The town is set up like a grid, kind of mm-hmm. like how New Orleans was originally supposed to be planned to, or at least built to, to resemble at some point. Um, since it's right off the river, you have a lot of the Spanish moss grown on all the trees, and you have quite a healthy dose of seafood down there as well. So mm-hmm. so if you haven't been to, to New Orleans, I would say Savannah is probably the most New Orleans-esque city I've been to. Right. So. Somebody described Savannah as me to me as New Orleans but clean. Uh, yeah, fair, <laughs> fair. Yeah, I would say that. Okay. Yeah, because New Orleans, everywhere you go, it smells of booze and crap. Yeah, mm-hmm. and pee. Right, and, and pee. vomit. And vomit. Mm-hmm. And vomit. Mm-hmm. I remember and that. that's just bourbon treat. Right. Right, right. <laughs> the worst is when you see some lady pushing her kid down Bourbon Street, and it's like, do you realize where you are? <laughs> My favorite story is, is we went down 
right before the pandemic, mm. and uh, we're walking down Bourbon Street, and I know we're walking by a gay bar, and I go, Rick, which is my father-in-law, and we went, man, me and Mandy, my wife and her parents, and uh, we're going down Bourbon Street, and we're walking by the gay bar, and I'm like, Rick, let's go in this bar, and he turns, and right when he turns, there's a guy on the counter, and he bends over and pulls his pants down, and all he sees is his ass. And yeah. He's like, no! <laughs> <laughs> and my my mother in law is just drunk enough to be like, "What? What are we? What am I missing?" <laughs> New Orleans, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, some New Orleans. Yeah. So we actually, hopefully, Mardi Gras is still in in uh, check this year. We're going down for the uh, crew to bar, Chewbacca's. No, I've I've heard about the crew of Chewbacca. I've not seen it or witnessed it, so I'm gonna live vicariously yes. through your adventures. We found a, a bed and breakfast that's on the route. Nice. So it'll be fun. Nice. Yeah, my dad. I he he for twenty years he's been saying that. Oh, thank you. It's not your cheese. He's been saying for twenty years that each year is going to be his last ride. With uh, because he rides in the crew of Hercules mm -hmm. in Homa, and every year he says it's his last year. He but he said that for twenty years, so right. I don't know. I don't know if this is actually his last year. Probably it probably won't be. So. Right. Awesome. Mardi Gras is something something yeah. special. It is, and some also uh, kind of like while we're on topic, like Mardi Gras in Homa is just as big as it is in New Orleans. A lot of people like. Like, the, the romanticized idea of Mardi Gras and its relationship with New Orleans, like, makes everybody flock to New Orleans and Bourbon Street, and they want the, the Bourbon Street experience, and... But if you go to Homa, it's just as popular. It can sometimes... I won't say it gets just as crowded, but it's... You're able to have as much fun there as you would in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. Floats and beats. Right. That's... Yeah, the... the, the yeah. It's fun. When you, when you go to the uh, small town parades, they're fun, too. Mm -hmm. Just as much fun. And people don't get as drunk. <laughs> cool. <laughs> you got questions. Oh, yeah. So, also, to introduce yourself, what do you collect? How did you start getting oh. into collecting? Like, um, Well, my name's Jordan. Uh, I've, you know, I've collected stuff on and on just from as long as I can remember like whether like my first toy line that I fell in love with and still collect to this day was like the was Transformers that was like my first cartoon I ever remember watching that's yeah. the first toy I ever remember having and I so I've collected Transformers on and off since god like 87 80, like years years and then obviously that that you know I was a child at that point, so it would just turn into like whatever the next big you know Turtles was the next big thing, then X Men was the next big thing. So I would just collect all of that, and then then I found out about Star Wars, and my world changed, right? Because <laughs> everybody has that that before Star Wars and after yeah. Star Wars moment. Yeah. Um, my brother, who was ten years older than me, had a bunch of Star Wars figures from whenever he was growing up, and he bequeathed them to me so i have like the old vader case and i had a, a slew of just these original like figures from like the 80 empire run and the 83 uh, return of the jedi run I have no idea what happened to the figures the only one that i still have is yoda and i don't even know which yoda it is i'm sure i could probably get in there with a you know my glasses and check the copyright date yeah, yeah. stamp or something but but as far as like the modern stuff goes like again i've, I've collected Star Wars stuff on and off, Transformers stuff on and off, but the last handful of years, it's been, my main thing has been Transformers, Star Wars Black Series, and Vintage Collection, and also, like, the Marvel Legends stuff, and I'm kind of starting to weed myself, or wean myself off of the Vintage Collection stuff, so, because uh, a lot of the, the stuff that I'm getting from my collection, I tend to open, and pose and all the vintage collection stuff while i love it tends to stay on the card because the card art looks too good for yeah. me to take that stuff off the card so i'm kind of leaning away towards vintage collection stuff at the moment just for those big three so you've listened to the show and you've listened to me complain over and over again <laughs> about, uh, 
what's the difference between Star Wars Black Series and Transformers and Marvel? It seems like they're all treated differently. They are, and I can tell you right now that out of those three, that it's easily Marvel is the money maker. It seems for, like it. And because I can tell you, since January of this year, we've had, I think, six Marvel Legend lines come out. There was a <laughs> Spider-Man, there was an X-Men, there was a Villains wave, a Disney Plus wave, there was there was recently an Shang Iron Man wave, Iron Man wave, Iron Man wave, and the Shang Chi. So that's six. And then on top of that, I think there's another one in a couple of months coming out. Well, they have the the, the Disney Plus. That's probably what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Disney Plus is out. So Disney Plus came. Disney Plus and the Villains the wave dropped wave? the same. No, that's next year. Oh, okay. So they, they just announced that. There's a X-Men Age of Apocalypse set that's coming out either next month or October. So and so I mean I'm sure you guys watch the same like Hasbro first Fridays. You pop right. in. Right. I yeah. Do. So the the guy's too much of a nice guy for me. I just he annoys me. That's that's fair. Paul? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. guess. I think that's the same. And I I'll say this. Uh, it, it doesn't help that Hasbro owns 80% of my childhood right. as far as franchises go because they everything that they have for the majority with the exception of uh, Masters of the Universe uh, is like stuff I collect they own um, but I can tell you like even comparing Star Wars and uh, Transformers that I feel like even Star Wars gets more releases than Transformers. Although lately, Transformers has actually kind of slowly been catching up. Mm -hmm. But um, all the first Fridays that Hasbro has done this year have been major the majority have been Marvel Legends. Yeah. And you might, and even the content, like, even if they had as many Star Wars first Fridays, a lot of the stuff you're getting is either stuff that they had teased in the pipeline so like it's nothing new it's like oh we're gonna tell you this at a later date and star wars i've noticed is the only first friday or, or fan live streams that they do the pipelines on which is kind of weird yeah <laughs> still recording yes okay and with the marvel stuff there's i know you've you've mentioned we've talked about this kind of off the podcast about transformers and how they get use out of their mold sometimes, but it seems with Marvel, it's all new figures, all new sculpts, for the most part. Y yes and no. Okay. Um, the bucks for a lot of those figures get you like, especially for the female characters, get reused a lot. Okay. You, they just put a new coat of paint on them, so it, to the naked eye, it's like, oh, okay, it's, it's new. But the the buck that they use for the Spider-Man, which is kind of like the slender, fi the slender body mold with the the butterfly joints on the chest, like that, ends up getting reused pretty, pretty regularly. Like okay. for, and but I think you'll you'll start to see newer versions of that because they're they're all doing the the pinless stuff now, for the Marvel Legends. Have they started to do pinless, pinless. stuff? For That's just, that, those are the pins like at the knees to try to hold. And them on together. the elbows, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Have they, have they not done any pinless stuff for for Black Series yet? I haven't sure. noticed. We have Bo Katan here. Yeah, let's uh. I'm gonna check her. She got pins. Oh, uh, hold on. Oh god, this is what you're saving it for. <laughs> I'm ah. saving it for this. Wait, should I take it's a picture? Opening. We're we're. Oh wait, wait, we're recording. Oh, okay. since this is a good. Do you need another drink, Jason? Yeah, I will. Want... In a minute. It's just, that's disrespectful. <laughs> it's completely unnecessary and disrespectful. I'll do this nice because I don't want to lose her weapons. <laughs> It's not 3D, so you don't need to throw it down. <laughs> oh, you know what? Since that's a female figure, she's got the single joint elbow. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> the single joint elbow. Huh. Yeah. It's, uh, it's penless, but it's, it's the single joint. What do you mean by single joint? So on a lot of the, a lot of the Marvel Legends figures, they have the double elbow <laughs> joint. So you can, instead of it just being able to do this, you can actually take that second joint and make it come all the way up. Oh, okay. So you're describing, like, coming, I don't know, maybe yeah. 30 degrees, but then you can take it all the way to Yeah, so, so they'll have, like, an elbow joint here where, with their art, point of articulation on the top and the bottom of the elbow. So you can get that extra degree yeah. to, uh, to bring it closer. Uh, same thing with the legs, too, depending on the figure, obviously. Uh, but 
These have a single joint with a with a swivel articulation at the knee. Uh, this is riveting visuals for an audio podcast. Right. <laughs> well, that's why we're recording it. <laughs> so, recording oh, that's right. I keep forgetting this. Well, I'm learning here. stuff too because so. I didn't realize the the joints and everything. Yeah, yeah. So like a lot of the Marvel Legends are super super art, art, articulate, which uh, is kind of what drew me towards them. And like I I'm mainly just an X Men guy, and I collect some of the X Men stuff. But every once in a while. They'll pop out a character. I'm like, I, I think I need to add that to the shelf. So well, it's interesting that they're both owned by Disney, but one's treated differently than the other. I, Gosh, I wonder why. <laughs> Which I mean, they're both, but they they both make money for Disney. Like right. I don't I don't understand why one would be favored more than unless this is why and this is what you were talking about where you and I were were talking and I I don't think it's so much more Disney, but I think it's more Hasbro. Because I feel like, at the end of the day, Hasbro is, they're, they're the ones distributing the figures. They're not, they're rolling out from Hasbro. They're not rolling out from Disney, right? So I, I wonder what it is specifically about Hasbro's distribution that makes them favor Marvel Legends over some of, a handful of the other stuff. Yeah. And I, I don't know what that is, but I can tell you that as far as Black Series stuff goes, like, it's just as frustrating trying to find... Transformers stuff. Like even last year, the uh, last fall, so we're like four or five months into the pandemic. Yeah. Wave two of uh, at last year's Transformers uh, run was called Earthrise. Was wave two and three came out at the end of the year between September and October, and I only saw those figures on the pegs once. I the ones that I was fortunate enough to get, I had already pre-ordered. And had I pre-ordered them, I would have lost out on at least two or three of them. Yeah. Um, but e- even then, like last year, towards the end of the year was when uh, for Black Series. That's when. And correct me if I'm wrong, but that's that's when the, the indoor Luke and Leia came out, and then they repacked the 40th anniversary yeah. of Vader with the Empire Strikes Back box, yeah. which I'm looking for. So if any listeners have an extra one. <laughs> 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 um, but then I haven't seen a black... There, there was no new Black Series set until this recent uh, release with bo and the Bad Batch characters. And then we're finally getting a third wave of Black Series stuff. Or at least the, sec- the second wave uh, of this year, I think. Um, with, I guess, Tech, Costa Reeves, yeah. the Aura Singh. So it, it's it's... I feel your I feel your frustration because I think you're absolutely right. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I would love to get six waves of Star Wars Black Series yeah. figures in a year, but, yeah. <laughs> but we're not getting that, no. sadly. Right. Well, I think the thing that annoys me the most with Marvel versus Star Wars is Marvel comes out on a Wednesday, Friday you got a figure. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. That could coincide with whatever right. that episode is. Or they release uh, female Loki. What's her name? Sylvie. Sylvie. On Friday, it's premiered. Or Wednesday, it's premiered. Wednesday night, you're seeing the figure for the first time, and then it's. It seems like it's going to be available soon. The only thing that I could think of, and uh, and keep in mind, this is basis. It's all in, speculation. In, it's all right. speculation, no fact. I'm. I work at a record store. I have no insider <laughs> information. Um, is the the level of secrecy? that Lucasfilm has yeah, versus different. Marvel Studios. Yeah. That's the only thing that I can think of. Um, I, you know, I would say also the amount of content that was also being released on Disney+, Plus, but we're still getting a lot of Star Wars content on Disney+, Plus as well. And But yeah, you're right. The, yeah. the, the release ratio and release reveal is very skewed when it comes to that. So. Right, and, and we'd mentioned this before, but Mar- uh, Hasbro Pulse really screwed up Ghostbusters. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, did the, wait, did they screw up Ghostbusters or did the pandemic screw up Ghostbusters? Right, right. But <laughs> yeah. They released the the trailer and then they're releasing the figures for oh, the, with the that's, movie. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You were correct. Yeah. yeah. So they're releasing the, the spoiler They show figures. the older, the legacy Ghostbusters in action figure form before you see them in film and trailer. Or yeah, I, d- I did notice that. And I did think that that was... They've, they've, cause they've been sitting on those for a year. Right. The, the movie was, for all intents and purposes, supposed, supposed to be out to be summer of last year. Yeah, we're supposed year. to already have it on DVD. Right. right. 
And so, like, obviously, because of the pandemic, the movie got pushed back a year, a year and a half, something like that, because now it's coming out in November. It's Actually, coming November out 11th. Thanksgiving, yeah. I think, is what I'm hearing. So, those, technically, those figures, they've had ready to go, like, in the, in the docket. But also, um, if you, I'm sure you guys watched the, what was it, the, the Pulse Con that they, since Comic Con wasn't a thing, they had to yeah, create their own, their own thing, their own live stream convention to reveal all the exclusives. There was two whole Ghostbuster releases for that entire weekend, and one of which was the Ecto-1, and the other one was a reissue of the old Ghost Popper from the real Ghostbusters, if you remember that, yeah. shot the little foam, foam darts, yeah. mm-hmm. and then that was it. And then that was the only new stuff that we had gotten Ghostbusters-wise until they just decided to reissue some of the old Kenner real Ghostbusters ghosts. And... Which are on clearance at Walmart now, right. unfortunately. I, I got... I... You know, I, I, I bought a few. <laughs> no, no, I, they were I'm not cheating hey, you. No, no, no. I'm just they're on clearance now. Yeah, which, that, is, which is a bummer. But I think also, like, that's, I think that's timing on that part, because now we're getting the reset for the new fall setup, yeah. fall winter setup, so. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Walmart is another, another uh, cluster. Because mm. you do have ones that they're all managed different. You got some that are clearance and stuff out. And yeah. Some that craps full price. Yeah, I... I uh, did you guys see my Instagram post of, about my my Walmart score last weekend? Oh yeah, the the, the Castle Grey Cast- store. Yeah, for thirty bucks. Yeah, it was thirty five, and the sticker said fifty six, and I had sixty dollars cash on me, and I'm like, well, I guess I'm gonna have to spend sixty bucks, and I begrudgingly brought it up because I actually found it in the clearance section. I'm like, why is this clearance? This just came out, and then again, it's a, a victim of the reset. Mm-hmm. So it could be a new thing, but if it's not, it technically came out this quarter, so it's old product. Right. Scanned it at the uh, at the self checkout, and it popped up as thirty as thirty five bucks. And my buddy Richard and I uh, saw that. And uh, get, wait, can I can I swear on your podcast? <laughs> Go for it. I went. I went Oh shit! And then everybody in the self checkout <laughs> looked at me, and I went, uh, "Never mind." So I was like, I just. Shoved my cash into the machine. <laughs> take it, take it, get, get out of here. <laughs> and, and, and the sad part is, is like two days after you posted that, somebody posted one for like eighteen bucks. What? Yes. Yeah, they drop no fast. way. They drop fast. That's nuts. Is that a re um, reissue from the old one? I think they new like. Sculpt? Yeah, I think it's a new sculpt, but they probably primarily use the old sculpt. Okay. I think there's newer bells and whistles. Especially with the new... And you haven't watched He-Man. Yeah, I did. I oh, okay. okay. We'll Especially with the reveal of mm-hmm. we'll get on, the, on the new He-Man. Mm-hmm. Um, final question for the cameras here. <laughs> so, ranking what you collect. So, you collect Black Series, Transformers, Marvel Legends, Master of the Universe. Am I missing anything? Uh, I mean, I, I also like we'll buy a wrestling figure here and okay. there. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like I just buy whatever I'm like, I want that. <laughs> right. So... Yeah. Um, what's, what's the easiest to find to the most difficult to find? Oh, easiest to find is going to be Marvel Legends. Hands down, going to be Marvel Legends. Um, right now, I would I would say Transformers and then Black Series. But if this was la- a year ago, I would have put Black Series and Transformers. Okay. Um, and then, then I would probably put Motu and then AEW. For the wrestling figures, those are tough to find. Yeah, uh, but their distribution has been getting better. And I, I there's, do um, you guys know Chris Jericho, the wrestler Chris yeah, Jericho? Yeah, he's a toy collector. Yeah, so he's he's got his own podcast, Talk Is Jericho, and he actually had uh, an episode of the guy, one of the guys who runs the that toy company, Jazzwares. His name's Jeremy Padwar. He was in one of the episodes, the wrestling episode of uh, the Toys That Made Us. Okay, they don't want to. Um, Anyway, yeah. like it's it's a really good episode. If you go back and listen to it, like he talks a lot about as far as uh, Jazzwares goes, the um, how they had to get AEW figures on the pegs, which is interesting because it was a brand new toy line. Like they specifically had to carve out a peg just for their product. Wow. When you're competing against yeah, the legacy of Star Wars and Marvel and Hasbro Trans- and Mattel, yeah. so it's. Um, it was it was an interesting story. It's like a build a figure. You get the leg, and if you want the rest, you gotta go to Spotify <laughs> and build the rest. Right. right. That's another Marvel Legends reference. Uh-huh. Well, Damn they, it, Jason. Well, they say like 
people want the build a figure in the Star Wars stuff, but it's just so expensive, and I think the cost is prohibiting Hasbro from being innovative and doing the things that they're doing with other lines. Didn't they do like a build a droid with some of the three and three quarter stuff? They about did, 10 but years that ago? was pre Disney. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And now they're yeah, but they are raising the price of the Black Series. Yes. They're raising the price of everything now. Oh, are they? Exactly. Really? Yeah. It's everything. Yeah, because of shipping costs. Yeah. They just um, yak face called out Star Wars because it's their cup of tea, but right. I, have, I have the costs here. So my my distributor at the record store where we get um, records and CDs from, I can order figures through. Um, and every once in a while, the problem is like, if you're a big box retailer, that's where all those figures go. My, my store, which is small, it's always back ordered, so I can never get anything. Mm-hmm. Because that'd be great if I could get it. Then my with my discount, I can get that stuff at cost, which is not very much. But I can tell you that the cost, as of a month ago, for a nineteen ninety nine Black Series figure was sixteen forty nine, and the cost what? is now eighteen forty nine. Yeah. Well, there's only a five dollar markup on yeah. those things. Like less than five. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. For the longest time, they've been saying that the vintage collection figures are about the same price to make as the Black Series. Mm-hmm. It's just a bigger markup on Black Series than vintage. It's and that's why they've kind of focused more on the Black Series and Vintage Collection. Mm-hmm. But for a regular figure, it's supposed to be $25. For the exclusives, they're going up to 30 And then for the deluxe figures, like that Boba Fett that came out the Return of the Jedi, is in 40 Woo! It's now a freaking peg warmer. Didn't somebody find those on clearance for like 7 or 8 bucks recently? Um, if it's at a Walmart, I want to doubt it. I bet you it was Walmart. Not any Walmarts around here. Maybe we yeah. need to go down to Louisiana. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> let's go. Let's do that. Maybe we need to be like those those people that go specifically down to Disney Springs to buy all the Disney exclusive merchandise. We'll just go down to Louisiana. I've utilized <laughs> those people. Those guys are a lifesaver. Yeah, yeah. I've I've done that. I have some a couple of friends that live in the Orlando area, mm-hmm. and every time I see like a pen or a piece of merchandise that I know my wife is gonna want, I'll be like, "Yo, can you hook a brother up?" And, like they always help me out. So right. that's good. Well, my uh, my son used to be a. a pass holder so we when we go to disney we'd be like we gotta go buy crap come on mm-hmm. come with me 20 percent. yep for one magical year and one magical year in a month i was a pass holder mm-hmm. it was great it was a year my wife and i got married we actually got married on a disney cruise oh wow yeah we got married on the disney dream and then we so like eight months prior to that nine months prior to that we were actually at disney world and she goes i think i'm gonna upgrade our tickets to annual passes I was like, "Are you sure?" She's like, "Yeah, I just got a." Did you drop up. down on your knees right then and there? That, I mean, I, I, it was, it was, a, it was an experience, Glenn. <laughs> it was, uh, but we ended up sneaking in two extra trips down to Disney that year because we knew we were going to honeymoon at Disney World once the cruise pulled up. So we were like, it just makes sense, and we used our the part of like our wedding fund to, to buy them. Mm-hmm. That was like the greatest idea we had that year, <laughs> right? And like, you got the discount on the rooms, you got the discount on the merchandise. I bought so much merchandise, like yeah. cool Star. That was whenever they were doing the cool Star Wars mugs and T-shirts that were the mashup of the old Disney rides. Oh yeah. Like I got the Jungle Cruise. Uh, I got the mug with the Jungle Cruise, but it has the ad ad on it. So it, what? it's yeah. It's, and then there was a uh, the Hitchhiking Ghosts. It was. Uh, Anakin, Obi Wan, and Yoda. I have those. Yeah, yeah. Those. I have that one. I have the uh, International Speedway, but it's all the speeder bikes. Mm-hmm. Oh, Not wow. speeder bikes. Um, land speeders. Yeah. Yeah. You know, speaking of uh, haunted mansion, somebody did mention on my Bill and Ted hard copies that they thought they were Bill and Ted haunted mansion ghosts. That was pretty cool. Because they're blue. Because <laughs> they're that blue. Makes sense. Yeah, you got to wonder. You know, with that twenty percent discount. They're still making money off of that. So what is the markup on all that Disney crap? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. But uh, speaking of Disney, do you want to talk to Star Cruiser? Because you're a Disney guy. Woo! You're a Disney guy. I'm a Disney guy. We kind of got into it last week, but mm-hmm. we can do like really, really, really deep is, dive. Is into there backlash it. on that? Oh, yeah. 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 Theme, theme Park Twitter. Backlash. Yeah, Theme Park Twitter, especially like Diz Twitter. Which is apparently the official hashtag name of it. Uh, we're we're having kittens over the price of that thing, okay. man. Like and and rightfully so. Like I I saw that whenever I I sent you guys that picture on our the group chat that we have. Mm-hmm. I was like, ugh, woof, these prices. Right. Yeah, you know I'm biased against 
Bob Chapek and everything that he's doing. And so when mm-hmm. I see things, I'm just like, well, that's more evidence. But I, that could be just my bias against him and looking for anything to say, yeah, Disney kind of sucks right now because of Bob Chapek. So mm-hmm. it's good to hear that it's not, it's not me. Right. You know, there it's are a lot the of an, an, a lot of anti JPEG people. Right. One of them. Disney. Yeah, I can we, tell. <laughs> we, we've edited out. We don't go into name calling, but no. I did call him a name one time, and I asked Glenn. I stopped the podcast. I'm like, can you cut that out? <laughs> I think I remember that episode. <laughs> did it air? Did, I thought we cut it out. We did you, cut it you, out. Yeah, you cut it out. But I remember you guys uh, talking yeah. about it. So, and I think you even referenced the fact that you, you cut it. I, out. I, I let it made known that I cut it that we cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you called them some. Well, no, that was somebody else. But yeah, and I, it just the whole thing with the Star Cruiser. I mean, I can understand the price, but I think it's going to be. I'm fearing it's going to be like Galaxy's Edge, where they're promising all this crap, and you're going to get out there and be like, oh. Well, everything in the Star Cruiser is what they promised us with Galaxy's Edge, right? And now they put up a paywall, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's the problem I have with it. So before we we dive into that, because I yes. have a lot of hard a lot of hard opinions on that. Uh, both of all of which line up with your opinions. Uh, we've all seen the designs of those rooms, right? Right. So it's like one. If you want the the cabin that's got the the king bed or the queen bed that also has the two bunks in the wall, mm-hmm. it's gonna take one kid to barf in those bunks <laughs> to ruin it for everybody else. Because how difficult is that gonna be to clean? Right. Right. And you think about cruises. I mean, you're hearing all the time that cruises have the viruses, not not just COVID, but right the whole, stomach flu. The, and everything needs to be cleaned out. So yeah, I'm like, right. are we going to get the same kind of thing on the Star Cruise? Group? Yeah, right. yeah. I can only assume that the, all those rooms will have to be sanitized from top to bottom. And they only have what two hours if if they if. kick you out at ten, mm-hmm. and you check in at one. That's three. Well, I'm thinking. I was listening to another podcast, and they were kind of going over everything. And they were like, when you show up at 1, but then they have like a muster at 4. So they're thinking that you don't get your room till 4. Mm-hmm. No. Okay. So from like 1 to 4 is, be, you know, you're going and you're getting check like in, snacks and tour, check-ins. Orientation. And orient- all that BS. And then when the muster happens, mm-hmm. that's when you get your room. So a typical hotel room, you're getting your room at 4. That, that sounds, yeah. And it took me a minute. More... Longer than I, I'm proud to admit, <laughs> to realize that they're treating it like an actual cruise ship. Like if you were to book a cruise mm-hmm. on like Carnival or or Royal Caribbean, that's kind of how it operates. Like you pay your lump sum, and then you get all those amenities because of the lump sum. It's like they're they're literally treating it like a cruise where you you have that check in. You can't go to your bunk until a certain time, but you can go on the ship mm-hmm. and hang out. Uh, yeah, it took me it took me about a week, and then I was thinking about it. I'm like, oh, why didn't I get to understand this sooner? <laughs> right. Well, it is a quote-unquote cruise. Yeah. The, the part that when you look at the timeline, you show up at 1, and you leave at 10 o'clock or 8.30 two days later. Mm-hmm. So you, you don't even get 48 hours on the thing. No. So let me, let me put this in perspective. Mm-hmm. My wife and I just two weeks ago booked a seven night stay with park tickets with the park hopper option Mm -hmm. and we're staying at a moderate resort we're staying at port orleans riverside uh shout out to port orleans riverside oh i had a horrible experience oh no i want to hear that story um for seven nights we, we get there on a thursday and we leave on a thursday and it was almost a thousand dollars less than what the two of us could go to the Star Cruiser for. Right, and that's for seven, that. seven full park days. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How much? It was it, probably around, I think it was, it was floating around 4K. Yeah. And that's a good deal, man. Yeah. It is. Cause, so. Because we were just talking a thousand a day. Right. Mm-hmm. But he was, uh, David was figuring that with two kids. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, man, we, we, yeah, I don't have kids. I've got cats. Specifically for that reason, right? They don't get to go to Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when when me and my wife went in the late twenty in September twenty nineteen, we must have caught a super deal because it was right at three grand for seven days with mm-hmm. seven parks, with dining plan, and we were at uh, Caribbean Beach, which was fine. Mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, a lot of people complain about it, but I saw no, you know, it was just an older hotel. Yeah. Uh, but I saw nothing wrong with it. Can I, can I tell you my Caribbean beach story yeah. real quick? 
So one of our one of our trips with our annual pass uh, was for my wife's birthday in April of 2017. Uh, she's like, let's let's go, but let's stay at a different hotel because we normally stay at one of the two Port Orleans. Mm-hmm. Um, so we decided Caribbean Beach, and then we got an email saying that hey, we're going to be doing some construction. So if you still want to stay, we'll we'll give you twenty five dollars a day on a gift card for for the inconvenience, and we're like. Yeah, okay, whatever. We get an email a few days before we go, and they're bumping it up from $25 a day to $50 a day. So we end up getting like $250 on a gift card because they're doing construction during our stay in an area of the resort that we're not even staying. And then when we get down there, we realize that the construction hadn't even started yet, but they had prematurely sent out the email but because they had prematurely sent out the email, they had to honor it. So we got, we didn't, we ate for free the entire trip, wow. <laughs> that, that, that that trip, which was nice. Right, and then when when we went, they were still doing, if you wave mouse keeping, they'll give you like $5 mm-hmm. or $10 a day. So we ended up with, same thing, it was like $60 that we could just blow at the park, which mm-hmm. was great. Um, you know, $60 isn't a whole lot of money, but when it when you could buy one extra souvenir, oh, it's a yeah. lot of money. Oh, yeah, yeah. That that'll go a, a decent a decent way at, at Disney World. Right. I yeah. want to hear your Port Orleans Riverside story. It was just a victim of circumstance, really. We had booked through a cast member, so we got like a we got a really good room, but then we were bumped, and nobody told us we were bumped. And I'm just like, I get it. We're we're booking at a cast member rate, so mm-hmm. we're less than somebody who's paying more, and you're gonna obviously put them in the good rooms. But you show up, and then all of a sudden you don't have a room. We don't have the, no, we have the room. It's just parking lot. And it's just, oh. It just kind of sucked. And then we didn't have our magic bands, so then they had to like credit us money so we can go buy magic bands. And then... Oh, yeah. I'm allergic to cats. Oh, okay. so I'm just like, oh, no, I don't want to start sneezing. <laughs> you, you definitely don't want to come to my house then. And then it was just one thing after another. The whole weekend, nothing went right. It was just... That was when three of us got on Rise of Resistance, and then two of us came for an hour later. Mm-hmm. And it was the kids, too. So it was just like, we can't send two kids on Rise of Resistance. So we went to go try to fix it, and they're like, well, you need to go talk to this person. So we go over there, and they're like, you shouldn't have sent... They shouldn't have sent you over here because we can't do anything about it, and it's too late now. Mm-hmm. It was just like, thing after thing after thing, and we're just like, we're never staying at Port Orleans ever again. Oh, that's a bummer. And it was specifically Riverside? Or was it the French Quarter? No, that's fair. I think it's French Quarter. We, uh, I, I tend to prefer French Quarter solely because it's closer to the beignets. <laughs> Glenn understands. <laughs> um, yes. But, uh, my Which wife... Is different than a bidet, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, very different. <laughs> I wouldn't need a bidet. No. I could, I could taste weird. Um... Uh, <laughs> Even hey, look, the, there's water coming yeah, in. Yeah, even water fountain. <laughs> even with the powdered sugar. Can't dress that up. Oh, um, oh quick beignet story. Yeah? We, uh, when last time we went, I'm like, I purposely know you don't wear black to Cafe Du Monde. Yep. Well, we were walking around and happened to be at Cafe Du Monde at like 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm mm-hmm. like, F it, let's go. Yep. I'm wearing all black. Well, why can't you do that? Powdered sugar. Powdered sugar, man. They oh. probably put a pound of powdered sugar on their yeah, beignets. Yeah, okay. okay. And I learned that you just go and walk in. You don't go stand in line. You just go get a plate. Mm-hmm. You just go sit down. And, yeah. So I, I knew it was going to be slow, and I'm wearing all black. You know what, though? I, I think it's a sacrifice that's well made, though. Right. Like it's, a, it's a New Orleans staple. Mm-hmm. Did, if you don't get beignet powdered sugar on you, did you really go to Cafe Du Monde? No. Exactly. <laughs> but, yes, back to Star Cruiser. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, do you guys ever see yourself going? In about two years. You think so? I I, I want to give it two years because I went too soon to Galaxy's Edge. I went a month after Galaxy's Edge opened, and it was too soon because people weren't ready. Now they may be ready for Star Cruiser since they're already starting to train people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But cast members that had no clue, you know, you ask for death sticks, and they're like, what are you talking about? Right. Hey, can I get some calf? Huh? Mm-hmm. Where's the fresher? What? For $6,000, they better know that kind of stuff. Right, right, right. I, 
I could see myself like I I probably about two or three years. I could probably convince uh convince my I, wife to. It ain't gonna be wives. It's gonna be the three of us yeah. with five or six other guys, and we're gonna get one of them right. big ass rooms, and we're gonna be party. two of us in one of those in the wall boxes. <laughs> That's the thing, man. Is because like if two guys wanted to go, two buddies wanted to go and split a room, you're splitting yeah. a queen bed. Yeah, you're not. You don't get bunks. Yeah, you somebody has to be big spoon and little spoon. Hey, you gotta figure that out. You know what? I'll take the hit. I'll be little spoon. Who? It's fine. It's fine. I. uh... I have no dignity left. It's fine. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What about you, Jason? Do you see? No. No? Not, not at those prices. There's so much more we could do at Disney. And we get more. Mm -hmm. A two-day experience. I, I just mm -hmm. feel like that's just outrageous. Well, if you think about it, like, all right, so we're say, we're talking less than 48 hours, and if it was two people, that's, what, 4500 bucks? Was that... That's right at 5K. Okay, so let's round up to 5K. For twice... The amount of money, let's let's say ten thousand dollars, you can stay probably over a week at a deluxe resort. That's the, either the two Animal Kingdom lodges, the Contemporary, uh, the Polynesian, which is kind of like my my life goal resort. That's where I want to stay for a week. But you can you can like ride high at the super like really nice places there for for that price for twice twice the time. Right. I stayed at the Polynesian. I want to figure out which room John Lennon stayed at. I've been trying to figure that out too, and I think like I know that somewhere they have to have records of it. Yeah. Um, but as far because they've renumbered the rooms a handful of times, because mm -hmm. that's that's the infamous room where the he signed, signed the papers. papers. Yeah. yeah. Drinks. Drinks uh, again. Uh, uh. Uh, breaking up. Breaking up. Uh, the Beatles. Oh, what was what was oh, what was that band called? Oh, the Beatles. Yeah. That's right. Have you guys ever heard of them? No, <laughs> no clue who they are. It's a small town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm. It's hard to say. I, yes, I what I'd like to do it. Yeah, and I, I, I truly think that if I get a group of guys and we, you know, split a room, we can do it. Mm -hmm. But it's it's still gonna be a couple of thousand dollars. I yeah. also have to wonder what's the experience like. Is it geared for kids? Like lightsaber training? Is that? Four kids, how would that work with a group of five adults? Right. Because the Jedi training is only for children. Right. Is it? Uh, yeah. So, also, yeah. Well, the Jedi What the were you going to say? Because, <laughs> because I agree. That's a little bullshit. Yeah, it is bullshit. <laughs> uh, I will say, though, anytime... It's a bunch of bantha poodoo. I'll, I'll bring, it back, <laughs> bring it back to Star Wars. <laughs> I, I will say my, my favorite thing to do is every time I pass by the Jedi training show and Darth Vader's out on the stage and, like, the kids are fighting him, I always yell, No, Anakin, not the younglings! <laughs> <laughs> no, One or two people laugh. I'm not talking about that, though. I'm talking about the room where you go, where you put on the mm -hmm. VR headset, you ignite your lightsaber. Oh, Is that okay. for kids only? That better not be. Hmm. Because there there is like a two hour block or there's a block of time that is lightsaber training. Mm -hmm. Oh no no I'm sorry it's not lightsaber training that's when you're on the bridge. But uh, there's a block of time where you're lightsaber training. There's a block of time where you're on the bridge, and then like halfway through the bridge training, there's like a gala that happens. There's live entertainment in the main hallway, in the main room. Uh, so I'm I'm curious how much of that is how is it. I want it to be like Westworld. If I'm spending a thousand dollars a night or fifteen hundred dollars a night, I want it to be like Westworld. I want to come home with my hand chopped off, and I got a bionic one now. Right, and and the whole thing that stinks about it <laughs> is you think for two thousand dollars or five five k for two days for two people, the only thing that looks like you're coming home with is a model of the Halcyon, which has nothing to do with Star Wars. Right, because or quote unquote our Star Wars. Right, because they want you to buy the stuff in Galaxy's Edge, right? Like right. you're gonna you're you're gonna be spending money on top of all the money that you spent. And they're right. repeating the same problems that they had with Galaxy's Edge, where it's not our Star Wars; it's a new Star Wars that we're not associating ourselves and our nostalgia with. Right. I can, I, you know, I, I feel like I give that a little bit more grace than a lot of people. Like I'm fine with the fact that they chose a specific era to do that and yeah they did they very much did limit themselves like yeah. I think they limited themselves a lot whenever they decided to to create Batu or Galaxy's Edge because there's no reason like when you think about it in the grand scheme of things 
and all the land that Disney owns down there. There's no reason that Star Wars couldn't have been a fifth gate. Star Wars could have been an entire theme park in and of itself. Right. And that would have uh, been able to, you know, spread people out a little bit more through through some... I mean, obviously, you probably would have had an uptick in in park visitation, which means that you probably have to have more resorts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I have to burp, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> I was holding that one back for a minute. But, and, and, you know, that, that brings up a whole bunch of other complications. If you have a new park, you need more resorts, and that means more people, etc., etc., etc. But I, I feel that, like, even with what we got with Batu, I feel like I give it a little bit more grace than a lot of other people do. Like, just because I know that a lot of the Disney stuff is I want people to go, like, they want people to go, or <clears throat> in comparison, let me start that whole thought process over in comparison to universal studios where their whole slogan was ride the movies like you would go and you would experience the movies like the old back to the future ride or the old jaws ride and like didn't disney's at least going hey we want to give you something that's quasi new right? right we want to give you something that's new but familiar you can do some familiar stuff but this is also a new chapter and where where this entire franchise is headed yeah. i feel like i give it a little bit more grace than others so and that's where i'm at yeah, they, they they lock themselves into a thing that nobody kind of resonates with. The the sequel trilogy is come and gone, mm-hmm. and Mandalorian is now taking over. Mm-hmm. How do you incorporate Mandalorian? They they've kind of mentioned they can have Festival of Heroes, but they haven't done that yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe they don't need to. Maybe the pandemic has kind of messed things up. Oh, the pandemic's messed everything up. Yeah, Disney. but I, I kind of see things playing out in two ways. I think at some point everyone's trying to get rid of um all their licensed rides Mm -hmm. so licensed meaning that cbs owns the twilight zone disney's paying cbs Mm -hmm. money to use the twilight zone for the tower of terror they obviously just would prefer to keep that money Mm -hmm. so at some point they're going to get rid of that at some point i think universal is going to get rid of universal um uh, superhero island the islands of adventure yeah yeah, yeah. islands of adventure and they're going to get rid of all that marvel stuff so Sometime in the future, that's going to become some other IP at Universal Studios, Islands of Adventure. And either they're going to transform that Hollywood section of, of Hollywood Studios, where the Twilight Tower of Terror is and the Aerosmith thing, because there's been rumblings forever mm-hmm. that they're trying to get rid of, or replace Aerosmith with something more timely. Mm-hmm. Jonas Brothers at one point, because they were... <laughs> a I'm, Jonas I'm not, Brothers roller coaster. I'm not joking. At one point, that they is, were talking Jonas Brothers. That is nuts. Um, yeah, well, the young girls well that there. would make sense though because the Jones, weren't the Jonas Brothers signed to the Disney record label? Mm-hmm. They, Camp they did, Rock. They yeah, had their jo- that's right. That's they had right, their Jonas show. The Henry that, Duff roller coaster. That section <laughs> is going to either become Marvel's, Marvel Island because now they have the Avengers Campus mm-hmm. at all different sorts of resort um, properties across the world. Mm-hmm. So this might become another one of those. Or they're going to open up a fifth park with an Avengers campus, and that's a perfect opportunity to have a Tatooine land. Yep. I see those two possibilities playing out at some point, because with Universal opening up their fifth, their third gate, I don't know, fourth gate if you want right, to mm-hmm. count the volcano, which I don't see as an actual park. Yeah, I mean, it's a water park, but I don't think... They, they count yeah, it that way, man. so... Well, good for, good for Universal. <laughs> Disney's going to want to compete. <laughs> dude, I have nothing. Dude, my son works for Universal, yeah. so I can't fault him. And they, they nailed Harry Potter. They they told Disney, they, you know, and, and it sucks because Universal did Harry Potter before Disney did that too. And mm-hmm. they, all Disney had to do was go down the street and figure out how to do it right. Well, mm-hmm. Disney had the opportunity to do Harry Potter. Yeah. But they yeah. were just going to do a ride. They weren't going to do a land. Um, and we've mentioned this before, Universal seems to be leading the way, and Disney's just looking over their back. What are they doing? Right. Well, we got to do that. What are, What are they doing now? we got to do that. I mean, this new uh, this new theme park they're opening up, it's going to be centered around the hotel. So you could come out of your hotel, you can go to one land, you can go back into the hotel, you can come out and you go to another land. It's like each land is a separate theme park. Mm-hmm. I'm, uh, I have not been to Universal Studios since 1995. A lot. With as many times as I've gone down to Disney in the last ten years, mm-hmm. I still have yet to to make a trip to Universal, and that's not for lack of wanting to. Like I've wanted to, but a lot of times, anytime I try to talk my wife into it, uh, it's usually, well, if we're going to go down there, why don't we just go to Disney? And it turns into a Disney trip, mm-hmm. which is, you know, understand. Like I'm not going to say no to a Disney trip, right? But the last time I was in a Universal park, 
I ate a burger from Mel's Diner. I went on the Back to the Future ride. I did Jaws. Uh, oh, jeez. Yeah, I yeah. did... Uh, you did all the crap I want to do. The well, stuff that's not there. Yeah, right. the, stuff, the, the Mummy ride was uh, kong mm -hmm. So it was the King Kong ride back then. Um, Those were the days. So I, it's, it's a very different park now. So I've not been to anything like Harry Potter. I've not been to anything Islands of Adventure. But again... I've got tons of friends down there who visit pretty regularly, who post stuff on social media, or even have like you know YouTube pages, and they they do vlogs down there and whatnot. So, um, I I see the stuff. I just haven't experienced it. And I I keep trying to convince because I'm a big horror guy. I keep trying to convince my wife to go do Halloween Horror Nights for a weekend, and we were going to. Um, last year. But <laughs> what we, happened? Uh, I don't. I don't. Did you guys know that a virus what? just came out of nowhere? <laughs> Legend. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like that asterisk right there. <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't know. <laughs> but, you know... If, if, Let me put know. on my tinfoil. Yeah, exactly. And start talking about that. But uh, we were actually uh, in Disney like three weeks, four weeks before the shutdown even happened. So... Yeah, we were there two months before. Yeah, it's nuts. Because, like, that's... That was my port on the industry. So, oh wow, we uh, yeah. When you said Rise of the Resistance, I kind of put two and two together. Well, that was also like whenever That's more than um, I could do with math. <laughs> <laughs> there was that was also like that was our first time seeing Galaxy's Edge, and you know we were able to we we woke up at five thirty in the morning to be in the park to get the Rise of the Resistance boarding group, which yeah. we lucked out and got, and it was it was uh, it was also my birthday so like the, my my first time in Batu was on my birthday oh, so it was awesome. pretty it was pretty that's special yeah so so could shout shout out to my wife Chelsea for for making that trip happen so she's never going to hear this she doesn't listen to podcasts <laughs> <laughs> that's all right we shout out to his wife and my wife and one <laughs> oh, we're doing right shout yet. outs now i want to shout out to my daughter's friends who were giving me shit last night about being on on this podcast and i'm like we're <laughs> they wanted to be on the podcast this morning when we were recording. Uh huh. Because we pre recorded a segment for upcoming weeks and they didn't realize it. Oh, we could have been on the podcast? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'll give you a shout out at some point. They're like, can you do it tonight? And I'm like, fine. So there's the shout out. Moving hey. on. <laughs> <laughs> but, what were we doing? Uh, I don't know. It's Universal. Right tangent. Yeah. Universal and. Just Galaxy's Edge in general. We segued from the Star Cruiser to Galaxy's All Edge. All right, so let's go back to... Because we've talked about Galaxy's Edge way too much on mm -hmm. the podcast. Yeah, we got another one coming up, too. Yeah, so. we talked about so that. So can I, can I, too. for a second... Uh, yes. Because I, I, I frequently listen to the podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, big fans. Uh, thank you. Big fan. Uh, so thank you for having me on. Um, thank you for listening. <laughs> yeah. So, like, there are a lot of times where I'm driving to and from work and I'm listening to the podcast... And you guys start talking about Galaxy's Edge, and I'm like, I did that! And I just get really excited. <laughs> that, well, that's the coolest thing, is is I think if they can incorporate Batu into some of the stuff that's coming out. Because they, they had it a little bit in the Resistance, mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the cartoon. And I think if they could do that, because, uh, you know, going back and watching Clone Wars and watching the lights, the, the uh, pad of... What? Hey, welcome oh. to the country! Was that a car or a gunshot? That was probably or fireworks. fireworks. Yeah. Mm. Jinx. <laughs> you owe me a soda. Um, <laughs> but like watching the the Padawans go and get their lightsabers, mm -hmm. get, get the Kyber crystals. It's like I did that. Even though it's a watered down version, mm -hmm. you're able to be like, I did that. Uh, but yes, I think if they could do that in Bat Two, and be like, I was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, we're talking about money just a little bit before, you know, if you're spending $4,000 and you're watching The Mandalorian, you go to Disney, you want to see the child, you want to see The Mandalorian, yep. you can't. Right. They've limited it. I think they could have done that too, but just done it open-ended, not shoehorned it between eight and nine. Yeah. That's fair. I think that's a very fair... Yeah, they, they could have. And I think maybe you'll start to see that tweak. I think as the Mandalorian goes on and all the other Star Wars content we get on, on Disney Plus, I feel like you'll see like the Imagineers start to <laughs> duck. <laughs> Were we safe? It was uh, it was not all quiet on the Western Front apparently. <laughs> um, 
I think you'll see like the Imagineers sneak in and start to tweak some stuff and change some stuff and retheme a thing or two here and there. I hope. I just I I worry it's going to take them some time. I also worry Disney's been known to, and I mentioned this before, release a ride with the intent of updating it at some point down the line, and money's gone somewhere else, and budgets has been sliced. And, I mean, they had that whole ride where you're supposed to be on top of some creature on Batu that got cut. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be able to talk to smugglers and take credits with us, so if you beat up the Falcon and you got credits, you know, you go into the bar and they're like, we saw what you did to the Falcon, you only have this amount of credits, and that all got scrapped. Yeah, right. I I think a lot of that stuff, though, I feel would be easy to implement in the future, like, because a lot of that is just, like, computer infrastructure, digital infrastructure, right? They have the algorithms, they're just worried it's behind a paywall now. Yeah, that's the thing that I'm worried about, is, especially now, with, uh, with, with Chapek kind of coming in and being the big wig. Mm-hmm. Is like a lot of that stuff is going to be like the, the, how much fun do you want to have and how much money is in your wallet, right? Like and that and that kind of and I'm seeing that like, aside from all of the Star Wars stuff aside, I'm seeing that a lot in some of the other stuff in the parks. Like, I don't know um, if you guys have ever done like the the seasonal parties, like the Christmas party there or well, the Halloween just party there. On. Right, but it used to be worth it. It used to be. It used to be uh, um, that the tickets were like a hundred, a hundred bucks, and you and they would never oversell it. Right. And you would go, and everything would be a walk on. You would get like freebies as far as like some snacks here and there, and it was it was kind of worth your money. But then they started to sell more tickets, and and it just became almost more crowded during the party than it was during a regular park day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also. Um, you know, if you were staying on property, they would offer you a previous pandemic. Someone's just celebrating the podcast. Yeah, yeah. they're like, yeah, <laughs> Jordan's on! <laughs> <It worked." laughs> but, you know, it used to be that if you were staying on property, you got those extra magic hours in the morning mm-hmm. or on the after or, or in the evening so you could stay longer, right? And now, prior to the pandemic, you were able to do that, but now right. post-pandemic, it's for deluxe resort stays only for evening extra magic hours, and which is a big thing for me because my wife and I are night owls. We would rather stay up super late and mm-hmm. sleep in till like ten or eleven and get to the parks during the afternoon, you know, early morning or late morning, early afternoon, and then stay up all you know late right. again. So it's it seems that like a lot of stuff that was standard for everybody is now being taken away and implemented for the top tier. I guess, you know, for lack of a better phrase, the top tier guests that want to stay right there. So, I didn't mean to segue this into a whole d- d- Disney Parks no, thing. No, sorry. I, but at some point, I want to get back to um, modern, because I want to talk about yeah, Hazlab, yeah. Right. but we'll get back there. We'll get there in a minute. But we'll back, back to, yeah. but but like on the Star Cruise, you're only in Batu half a day. That's, yeah, that's nuts. That's not a lot. Right. But you're guaranteed Rise of the Resistance. If it's working. If it's working, yeah. mm-hmm. and you're guaranteed because they'll go, you go ride rise, and then they take you to Smuggler's Run, mm-hmm. and you do that, and then I've no, and then you go docking bay seven, and then does that take the four hours, or you get to do you get to go do other crap in Batu? Or? Do you get to go to Savi's? Do you get to go to Oga's? Right. Yeah. I, I'm assuming they take you to Oga's, and, and I would be pissed if I paid five grand and then I had to pay to uh, eat at Oga's mm-hmm. or drink at Oga's. Mm-hmm. But well, it is alcohol, and they do say alcohol is not included. So, yeah. kind of like in, in in relation to everything that we're talking about, um, you know, they were all the stuff that we were supposed to get with Batu, like the street atmosphere of the droids walking around and etc. Or, or rolling around, whatever the that droids became do. a liability. Right, right. Um, you know, the whenever Docking Bay had opened, they were they were really fun and creative with all the food titles and all the food names, and then people complained that they didn't know what it was. Yeah. And then they changed it. It's like, oh, it's just chicken. Right. Like, Olga Caesar salad. Yeah. Right. So, I'm like, oh. uh, but And then what I didn't understand about that is if you read the description, it said it in the freaking description. It did. It did. Uh, people don't read the fine print, or the smaller print, rather, because this was not very fine. It was very large. And in front of their faces, but people were just for some reason people were complaining. They're like, "I don't understand what that is." 
I don't understand Arabish. Learn it. It's okay. Like even <laughs> then, like, like it's the next line underneath that. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's still yeah. right there on the menu. And it's in the. It's on your phone. If you want to figure out what it yeah. says, all you got to do is take a picture yeah. of it, and, and it shows it to you. And, and I've kind of forced myself to. It takes me a minute, but I'm I'm starting to understand Arabish, and mm. if I. I can start to piece the words together. I yeah. can't read it, but if I take a minute, some of the characters looks very similar to like the Latin alphabet that we use, right? Like right. it's yeah, like the O is still a circle or yeah, like a four. Right. Yeah, it's like, rounded. Yeah. So, well, I I see some light at the end. Ugh. I see some light at the end of the tunnel because on Jim Hill's latest podcast, he's a Disney insider who knows a lot. Mm-hmm. But he he says the things that people inside Disney can't say, and it sounds like the board of Disney is rethinking having Bob Chapek at the top because of Scarlett Johansson. Like that whole thing was, he decided to draw a line in the sand and say, Bob Iger, you're no longer the CEO. Mm -hmm. I'm in charge, and we're gonna we're gonna put down Scarlett Johansson and this whole lawsuit thing. It pissed off Kevin Feige. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah, because Kevin Feige's like, no, this needs to be theatrical. We need to support Scarlett. Oh, this, I'm adding that part because I would assume she wanted the theatrical release. So he's like, I want the theatrical release. Right, for her. it was in her contract. Because right, she gave yeah. us, it's in her contract, but she also gave us a decade of her life. Yeah. And so it pissed, pissed them off. And that's why when you see, is it Shang-Chi? Shang-Chi, sure. yeah. Shang-Chi. Um, it's theatrical only. Mm-hmm. And so he's trying to make peace with Kevin Feige because. I think he's, his back is up against the wall right now. That would make a lot of sense, which is also weird, because when Iger, Iger had stepped down, and then Chapek was the one that was named CEO in his... During the pandemic, everything was starting to crash. And then he stepped down again, yeah. Yeah. Well, he, <clears throat> Bob Iger stepped down to the board. Okay. So he's not in charge of Disney, he's more in charge of making sure decisions are done right. Okay. It's my understanding of how the board is run, but you know he steps, he kind of steps down. Chapek steps up, but Iger's really like in charge. No, you want to do this, you want to do that, right? And so Chapek's like, "You're out in a couple months. I'll be putting my foot down with the Scarlett Johansson thing." Interesting, because I know that they they had to backpedal. Like when the pandemic hit, like like Chapek as CEO took a back seat so Iger could do his old job again for X to amount of save months. Save the company, yeah, right. yeah, and. Um, you know, Chapek is all about. He comes from products. He comes from marketing, sales. It's all about the products, and and Iger was more about the talent and making sure talent had what they needed to succeed and making sure they're happy to give us the opportunity to make more products. Right. Because he had a his background was TV, which is why we ended up getting all the acquisitions over the last hand hand you know decade plus. Which at first I was kind of like, why are you doing that? But looking back on it in retrospect everything's getting eaten up yeah so it's either eat or be eaten yeah right no, he I, made I the agree. right decision I'm like he's he's gotta be a good CEO because I liked the Iger years I know a lot, Iger especially in certain Disney circles online Iger gets uh, a lot of hate but I I didn't really mind any of his decisions that he either. made so except for putting Galaxy's Edge at a specific timeline I'm right. happy with all the decisions he made no, I, I can't complain. I'm right there with you. Do you agree, puppy dog? Yes. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> so you don't think you're ever going to make it to the Star Cruiser? You think two years. We're on the same... I'm thinking about two or three. Yeah, once two we say... And, and Look, I can't spend... I can't see myself spending... Upwards to, I mean, six thousand dollars is the off season. Yeah, ten thousand dollars for the on season for four people. I got five in my family. My daughter, I probably could drop her off at my mother in law because <laughs> she doesn't care about Star Wars. But you know, if I if I'm going down there for two days, I'd probably want to spend a couple of days off mm-hmm. the Star Cruiser. Mm-hmm. Right. So I don't know if I'm staying at a, a moderate resort or something, and she's going to want to be part of that. So I factor it's probably going to be five of us. Eleven thousand, twelve thousand dollars. Yeah, that's right. a lot of money. I can't. I can't. Yeah. It's just. It, it's gonna have to be a guy's trip. I mean, seriously. I have to piece it out and be like, yeah, I can spend two thousand dollars for my part. Right. And that is asking a lot. Mm-hmm. Right. For my family's budget. Right. No, I I totally agree. It's gonna be something where we plan it out, and my wife's like, okay, I've saved for two years, and here's your galaxy, you know, 
go go ride the Star Cruiser. Because she's already given me the she's already said she doesn't want to do it. And I personally don't want to spend the two thousand dollars on her to do it because she's not gonna she'd enjoy it, mm. but she's not gonna get the two thousand dollars worth out of it. I'm worried that I'm not gonna get two thousand dollars out right. of it. Right. And is it one uh, model per family <laughs> per party? Right. Because we'll be arguing <laughs> over who gets that. Right. And who's who's room and gets to stay That better be for every person. Right. And mm. and part of me is like It'll be like the Stanley Cup everybody gets in a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I really want you know you know, they showed that lightsaber. You don't you don't get to keep it? You know, you should be able to keep that lightsaber. I don't think you do. That would be or go to you know, go to Savvy's. Everybody you go to Savvy's and you get to build a lightsaber and, mm, yeah. you know, it's on the house or something. No. No. That's, no. Uh, no. Cha ching, no. No, because that's another two hundred and twenty bucks that they can hit you for. Mm-hmm. And you don't get uh, to my knowledge, you don't get the A P discount on No, that. you do not on, on so. Savvy's. On any on the droids, any I think any accessories for the droids you don't get a you know, I, I don't know I think mm. you on some of them you do but not on the droid itself I personally think the droids are underpriced for Disney I'm yeah I well when they came out and said it was 99 bucks I'm like I was prepared for two yeah two yeah. yeah I was as well because whenever I went like I went all in I, I built a saber at Savi's and I built a droid right and uh, I almost bought the backpack for it <laughs> I kind of wish I did but I think that that's my... I had to tell myself to save some stuff for the next trip. Right. Because I dropped so much oh money. We did the same so. thing. We had a budget. And we probably tripled our budget. Oh, yeah. Went I, I went over budget for sure. It's so quick. Yeah. So, it's not only so fast. You go to Doc Ondor, you're like, oh, yeah, I'll take the Emperor's cane. Oh, what's that? Yoda's cane? I'll take that. What do I need it for? I don't know. Maybe I'll find myself in need of hitting a droid someday. Exactly. <laughs> it's uh, like you do. Right? Right. I, I bought so much stuff. That whenever I packed my bag to go back to the airport, mm-hmm. I was half a pound away from them <laughs> charging me <laughs> for my for my luggage. Well, it's a good thing you didn't buy that Yoda light, cause right. No, like I, cause the one thing that I wanted that I didn't get was the salacious crumb that sits on your shoulder. Right. That's the one thing I'm like that I specifically told myself wait till next trip. Right. So I, I uh, left did you that. See that salacious crumb that Regal Robots doing? No, oh. I haven't. Oh my God! Jason's got a hard on for insulation. I love I love evil love Kermit. Kermit. Yes, <laughs> Regal Robot got the original sculpt sculptor of um, Salacious Crumb to do a really lifelike version of Salacious Crumb. So it's all like hard resin. It's hand painted. It looks. They're, they're only making 150 of it. I asked my wife, "Is there any way I can? <laughs> is there any way? Is there any way, woman, that I can get four thousand dollars?" <laughs> It's not going to happen, especially by August, because they gave uh, you like a, um, they gave us a month. Oh wow, um, man! To figure that out, but it's a one-to-one scale of the oh puppet of Salacious Crumb. He looks amazing. The original sculptor. It's been signed by the original sculptor. It's been signed by the guy who did the voice. We, we saw it. Um, I see. And we saw it at Joe Fest. Four thousand dollars. Jesus, man. There's a payment plan. Eight months, which brings it to five hundred. It looks amazing. I would die for it. I know someday. That's Star Cruiser money right there. Mm-hmm. Ten thousand dollars if I gotta buy it from someone. Mm-hmm. Right. It looks amazing, but yeah, man, I would love to have so that. So buy the seventy-five dollar version from. Galaxy yeah, Star that's someday. that's that's what I'll do. But you know, I, I there was stuff that I bought that I wasn't expecting to buy. Right. Like I bought the the stupid dice for the <laughs> for the I put the, so that's hanging around my rearview mirror in my car. I bought the Sabacc cards. Punch it, Chelsea. Yeah. That's your wife's name, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's her name. Um, that's your second shot. We, uh, so, like, I bought the plush Jabba the Hutt that looks like like the, the Batu artisan plush Jabba. Yeah. yeah. So I bought that. Like, I bought I bought a lot. The, yeah. You know, shout out to my in-laws. So, for Christmas, they knew we were going, so they hooked us up with a bunch of gift cards, which is... What brought the price of my lightsaber from two hundred dollars to seventy five dollars? So, shout out to them. And I will say that lightsaber is the best two hundred dollars I ever. Spent. Yeah, it's amazing. I no teared up. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. see. It was fighting. I tell everybody the hardest part of that experience is putting your pieces together through tears. Mm-hmm. So with that lightsaber, I have to ask a question because you both have it. Mm-hmm. And so I have mine display over the TV, and it took me a while to figure out what the hell in my room was making this noise. If you don't use it for a while, does it make a noise on you? I haven't noticed. 
Mine hasn't made a noise, but I do know that like, like the the batteries will drain just by being in it. Yeah, I get that, but it makes like a almost like a shimmering sound, like a. Well, do you display you display yours with the the blade in it? Though? The blade in it, and the batteries are still in it. So every once in a while, is I'm like, is it asking me to use it? Because it just makes this little <laughs> call of like a. So it's calling out to you. And I'll be like in the other room. I'm like, what is that in my room? Because everything's together. And mm-hmm. It took me a while, but I was actually in the room at the time that it happened. It was right above the TV. I'm like, that's the lightsaber. It's making that noise. That did actually happen to me once. But mine, actually, I don't. I display mine without the blade in it. Right. So it did happen once. And it caught, like, I was busy screwing around on, like, the computer doing something. And then I heard it, and I was like, oh, that's just my lightsaber. And it took me a second. I'm like, no one else is in the room. What's going on? Why was right. that my lightsaber? Yeah. All right, so... I thought my house was haunted for a second. That'd be awesome. Which would have worked out for you. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, would have been would have been investigating force ghosts. <laughs> but yeah, back to the hold on, Star Cruiser. I'm trying to remember what all you do, but there's like a gala, a gala one night. Because mm-hmm. once you get back from Batu, I think it's like an hour. There, there's supposed to be a Sabacc tournament. Also, when I'm looking, at, sorry. Finish, yeah, yeah, no, finish, no, finish, finish. No, no, and then then there's like pre-planned crap throughout the whole thing and it's like are you stuck doing the pre-planned crap crap or do you get to explore because the thing i liked about westworld is you got to, there was a main storyline or you can go off and do more crap mm-hmm. so is it do you get to do more crap or are you stuck doing the main storyline i feel like you have the option to go because like with that amount of money like they're not gonna i don't think they're gonna hold like a blaster to your head and be like you have to do this thing right right so, like, if you're hungry, you can go to the dining hall and grab some food. Like, if you want a drink, you can probably go and grab a drink. Like, like a cruise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But looking at that schedule, you know, there's 45 minutes set up for uh, Sabak. Right. Sabak training. Is that code for the Empire is going to invade? I know they've kind of said there's story beats along the way. Who really wants to sit down for 45 minutes and learn a weird card game? Mm-hmm. Right. And, and you're are you going to be able to learn that in 45 minutes? You can is it easy? <clears throat> it, it, it's pretty simple. It's close to poker? Yeah, because you know, you understand the gist of Sabacc. You try to get zero. Mm. Uh, and oh. you have cards. Because I've learned Sabacc. So it's like Sabacc. 21, except... No, no. Years. What it is is you try to get... So you have cards. You have a, a card that's zero. And if you get two of those cards, you're zero. Oh, crap. Hold on. See, you don't even know. But yes, I'm I do know. I'm, like, like, you're, if I'm there with have, a five-year-old... The five-year-old, I have no clue what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like... Are they really going to try to force Sabacc on a five-year-old? Why the hell would you go to the Star Cruiser with a five-year-old? Because they like Star Wars. (laughs) My five-year-old grandson would shit his pants going. I'm sure. Yeah, because I took a four-year-old to Galaxy's Edge, and he was scared. He was scared of Rise of the Resistance. So you're going into a very immersive environment. That brings up another point. You're going to a very immersive, immersive environment in the... First Order invades your starship. Mm-hmm. Are you going to feel safe to sleep at night if you're five years old? Oh mm-hmm. my god. I didn't even think about that. Right. Like, I mean, a lot of Rise of the Resistance is really tense, too. Like, mm-hmm. you, you you know, the, the trackless system, your your ride vehicles, like, being jerked which way in that, and like... See, I've never right. I, I've never ridden it. Oh, but... I have not mm-hmm. ridden Rise yet. Never mind then. I went before Rise was over. But you know the beats of it, right? A little bit, yeah. So I tried to prep the four-year-old saying, you know, you're going to go to Star Wars jail, and you're going to see Stormtroopers. Mm-hmm. But it's all it's all Halloween. You know how Halloween you... Like, this is what I'm explaining here. I'm not yeah. explaining to you. Right. But in Halloween, you dress up and you pretend. It's kind of the same thing. You're going to go to Star Wars. You're going to go to Star Wars jail. It's all pretend like Halloween. He still got scared. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, being in that environment is overwhelming right. for a kid that age. So, you know, like I said, you're going to go on the Star Cruiser and Kylo Ren shows up. Everything gets quiet. Your captain gets a little scared. That five-year-old might have trouble sleeping at night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And will Disney do anything? Like, my son can't sleep in the bed tonight because of this. What I need to leave tonight. Right. Disney's going to have to refund that. Right. Mm. But that's going to... I feel like, though... <laughs> you'll have... I, 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 that's you'll, that's the copy, like... You'll have JPEG at the front door. No, go back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Force pushing you into the back. <laughs> Hold on, I need to get you on the cruiser to bring you back to Earth. But I think that that's kind of like the agreement Damn. that you'll sign. It's fine. You're good. Like, I feel like that's the agreement that you you waive and sign by 
by agreeing to paying your money to stay at that place, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like, I feel like they're like, hey, you knew this was going to get tense at some point, so mm-hmm. at that, like, you're you're welcome to go back to your room. I feel like that's going to be your safe haven. Right. You're welcome to go back to your. Cabin. Or they'll have other crap for you to do yeah. or something. Yeah, this would have been that- a good conversation to have on YouTube. <laughs> well, you're the one that took the camera down. Well, I have limited space and battery. Oh, uh, wah. First I have, problem. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, feel, I feel your pain. Yeah. That's fine. I'm just giving you crap, Jason. <laughs> I'm trying to help the podcast. Here. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think the first order is going to, because the way it sounds is the first night is just, first is all orientation and trying to get you used to crap. Mm-hmm. And then stuff's going to go down the second night. Mm-hmm. I think that's what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And then the next day you're gone. And then you're gone the next day. Got it. It's a quick trip. Right. Yep. Because I, it sounds like you're going to Galaxy's Edge and then you're getting immersed in the Galaxy's Edge and then they take you back and the shit hits the fan the second night. Which I, it better freaking... Yeah. Kylo Ren better show up and freaking take over that with 20 Stormtroopers. Mm-hmm. And I think we're in agreement so that's just a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Like, you're yeah. not going to go a second time. Mm-hmm. You're not going to spend another ten grand. I can't afford to spend another. Grand. I mean, unless you trip over twenty million dollars. Right. If I hit the right. lottery, we're all going on a star cruiser. Yeah. I'm saying, Epic, I'm buying. Everybody we each get trip. a star cruiser. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm buying it out. <laughs> but it was. But you know, when we stayed at Caribbean Beach, we drove right by them building it. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I was like, oh my god, that's the star cruiser. Yeah. You know, it's just it's just a a building. But uh, I mean, I yeah. <clears throat> The Halcyon is what the ship is called, right? Yes. Yeah. Which I was in a band called Halcyon Way. That's... Hey. <laughs> and it's still going strong. They the should hire is. you guys to play. Right. <laughs> funny as crap. And then you should say this is the Halcyon Way. Right. <laughs> That's the first thing I did when I heard the, the name of the Star Cruiser. I'm emailing my buddy. I'm texting. I'm like, dude, the Star Cruiser was named after your band. <laughs> I mean, there's no Darth Vader in all of Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, uh, that's the one thing that that no bugs Darth me. Vader. And you know, for the longest time too, before Batu even opened, you couldn't meet and greet Vader at the the launch bay section of Hollywood yeah, Studios. You still can because it was well, you can now, but you, it would only used to be Kylo Ren and Chewbacca. Right now it's BB-8. Yeah, so oh, there is BB-8. That's yeah. true, but now that now that Kylo Ren is over in Galaxy's Edge doing his walk around with his troopers they started to do star like Darth Vader and that was like whenever we went for my my birthday trip in 2020 that was the thing that I wanted to do the most was I wanted to get like I I got it on video I took got a whole you know we paid for the picture pass so I have the pictures like like Darth Vader is one of my all-time favorite characters of anything yeah so whenever I got to do the meet and greet with Vader as a 30 Seven. I turned thirty-seven that year. So I was like thirty-seven year old man. I was like, that was that was a big part of the trip for me. So and, and the thing because we we did uh, Hollywood Studios while they were still it was over here. Yeah, <laughs> while they were building Galaxy's Edge, we mm-hmm. went to Hollywood. I even called and I'm like, how much of Hollywood Studios is shut down? Mm-hmm. And we went and they did the whole parade of stormtroopers led by uh, Captain Phasma. That was awesome. That was cool. We, one one of our trips, we went. And as we were walking into, we, we tapped our magic bands at the turnstiles, mm-hmm. and we walked in, and then they said, you have to stop right here. And then right. Phasma and the Stormtroopers walked by. I was, and I, like, I got it like right on time with my video that camera. That needs to happen at Galaxy's Edge. Yes. Yeah, that needs I agree. To happen. I doesn't. agree. I agree. They need to do something more. And, and I thought I'd get harassed more at Galaxy's Edge, because I really wanted to be harassed, and the Stormtroopers... You know, I wanted that experience of being harassed by a stormtrooper, and they did a little bit, but it wasn't. <laughs> and then they're on to the next. Right. I got harassed. I got a line for you, and we're on. No, no, go ahead. No, no go. Oh, I got harassed by a, a first order uh, officer because mm-hmm. the Disney gives you the birthday buttons. Right. So he came up to me and went, "Happy birthday!" <laughs> it was like really angrily, and I was like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I agree with with you. Like. It, they need all like all that stuff. Like they need more street for sphere for right. sure. And I think you're gonna get. I hope you're gonna get that in the Halcyon. Which, yeah, they, they they're they're. It just it sucks because they're building it up like they did Galaxy's Edge, and 
but can't I, get anything. I feel like though that it's going to have to happen mm-hmm. on the Halcyon because like the entire experience hinges on that. Right. Whereas in a theme park, you can kind of get away with saying, "Well, we planned on doing this, but we can't do it now for these reasons." But you still get the atmosphere of the theme park. But you're in such a specific tight quarters that there's no way that the the let's like the the atmosphere of the resort. <laughs> Are we at Disney World right now? Yes. <laughs> is the fireworks happening? Yeah. This is a uh, Hollow Wishes. Listen, I had uh, speaking of fireworks, my son and I. We were at, we were at Galaxy, Galaxy's Edge. We were leaving one of... We were leaving... It was just me and him. We were in the Sci-Fi Diner. Love that place. Park closed like at 8. So everything closed at 8. I forget the whole timing. Anyways, the park was shut down. It was right before the fireworks. We got in. We had our dinner. It was just the two of us. The park was closed. We were leaving. We are walking down where the commissary is. And mm-hmm. on the other side is the Mickey Mouse thing. Fireworks are going up all around us. Mm-hmm. And we could hear the music, and it was such a magical moment. Mm-hmm. It was incredible. This was August during cast member preview. Mm-hmm. The fireworks are going off all around us. You were hearing the Star Wars stuff. I was getting a little emotional because I'm like, this is incredible. Right. And then we went around the crowd. We saw the backside of what they were seeing, which was the whole Star Wars on the man's Chinese theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The projection show? Yeah, the yeah. projection show. It was magical. Like, It was incredible. I love, yeah. I really enjoyed that projection show. But it was coming up from the buildings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we were between where we could look up and see the fireworks going up. Oh, wow. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, But like I was saying a second ago, I feel like that entire, the whole entire resort hinges on that experience, so they have to deliver on that experience. Right, yeah. Otherwise, it's just you're paying $4,000 to stay at another Disney resort. Right. That just so happens to be themed to a Star Cruiser. And that's what scares me the most, is I don't want to go <clears throat> and spend that kind of money and, oh, you're just on a cruise that happens to be in space. Mm-hmm. That's that's a lot of people's um, fear, mm-hmm. especially like in the social media circuits. And they're, they're kind of like treating it how they, they, like what you said, like, the idea of, or identity of like what Galaxy's Edge was going to be. Right. Right. Um, they're like, oh, somebody will complain and then they'll change it. Right. And like, that's, well, I hope that doesn't happen. Well, and the, the major thing I think they changed is you were supposed to, you checked in and they were like, what size are you? Or you they knew your size and they handed you a couple of outfits. Mm-hmm. Now you got to buy them. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's number one for me yeah. right there says it takes it down a notch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. BYOC, bring your own clothes. Right. Bring your own gear. Right. Bring your own cosplay. You said you wanted to um, circle back around to modern. Yeah, at some point. Okay. You ready? I mean, if we want to gripe about Galaxy's Edge more, we can. I don't want to gripe gripe about Hasbro. (laughs) We're going to get there, unfortunately. The face printing technology has been phenomenal. Yes. As he's looking at Bo-Katan. As yeah. I look at Bo-Katan, I think the the Black, um, Marvel Legends of Black Panther without the mask is probably the the greatest face printing thing they've ever done. It looked just like the actor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace, Chad Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't have anything to say. I, I complain about Hasbro so much. I don't right. know if I give him enough props that the face printing is incredible. Yeah. After that Rogue One wave, like you, oh you mentioned, they really stepped it up, and I think they were like, we need to fix that. That's something... Yeah, I want to see. Yeah. That's something that Disney once did. You could scan yourself, put yourself in an X-Wing pilot gear. That was 100 bucks. so I look at that. That could be a $100 figure if that was that the actor going into the studio and saying, scan me. Mm-hmm. You know, you're getting that for 20 bucks. Right. Well, I'm looking at her because she's on... Um... <clears throat> Crap, what's her name? The actress... Uh, uh, Katie Sackhoff. Katie Sackhoff. She's on. She's got a Netflix show that I'm watching. Mm-hmm. So I've, I, her face is familiar to me right now. I was watching it before y'all came over, and this looks like her. I mean, it it it's a really good face sculpt because her na- her face is is top of mind mm-hmm. to me. So they're they're getting there with their face sculpts. Also, you got to think like, how far has 3D printing come just right. in the last 
five years alone. But that's not 3D printing. That's a process of putting the paint application on it in a way that True. it doesn't yeah. look fake. It looks like the actor. Yeah, I, I yeah, you're right. You're right. I I guess my thought process was like, well, they can go and they can scan you. They can 3D print, but they still have to. They still have to paint, paint it. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you've seen customs where people have taken those Rogue One figures and repainted it, and it mm-hmm. looks amazing. Mm-hmm. The sculpt was always there. It was the way they applied the mm-hmm. deco. Right. Mm-hmm. Can we pause so I can take a pee break and get some water? Yeah, yeah. go for it. <laughs> and then I want to talk about Hazlab. We're going to pause it there while Jason takes a pee break and gets some water. And we're going to pick it up next week. We talked to Jordan for about another 30 to 45 minutes. Talked to him about Hazlab, being a modern collector, and uh, you know just his experiences with that. Find us on Instagram, Smugglers Galaxy. Find us on Facebook. Uh, email us smugglersgalaxy at gmail.com thanks for listening you guys have a great rest of your day this is the way